From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Al Sintel at police headquarters, Johnny. Better get over here to my hotel room, Al. I've got company. Who is it? Bill York. Amy Bradshaw's ex-husband? Right. I caught him watching her apartment half an hour ago, and he's the one who was watching it the other night. This time, I had better luck catching him. Has he opened up yet? No, but he will. Johnny, take it easy with him. I think he's got plenty to tell us. Looks like he's the boy we're after, Al. I'll be right over. Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. New York City. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar. To the Home Office, Northwestern Indemnity Alliance, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Amy Bradshaw matter. Amy, star of a Broadway play, and somebody was out to get her. Expense account item 10, $3. Repairs to one coat sleeve. Torn in the process of inviting Bill York up to my hotel room. Look, Dolly, you've got no right to drag me up here to your room this way. York, you're going to sit right here until you open up and tell me all about the attempt on Amy Bradshaw's life. What? You come in. Oh, Al. Hi, Johnny. York, this is Detective Lieutenant Al Sintella. Now look here, Lieutenant, what's this all about? Well, I kind of thought that's what you'd tell us, Mr. York. But this is crazy. Why would I want to kill Amy? You're aware that you're still the beneficiary on Amy's insurance policy. What? Even if also, I am... Also, you need money, and you need it bad. You're several thousand bucks in debt to Mike Pomeroy, Amy's agent. He's been pressing you for it lately. Look, Dollar... And you know you can't get the manuscript of your novel out of hock from him until you pay off. You've got two strikes against you, York. Motive and opportunity. Opportunity? Sure, but motive? No, Dollar. I've never had any reason to kill Amy. It's true she and I couldn't make it together, but I guess that was more my fault than hers. Go on. You see, Amy's never let anything stand in the way of what she wanted. What she wanted, I didn't. I guess we just lived in two different worlds. What do you mean? She's always been a success, and I've always been a failure. You still haven't explained why you lied to me, York. Lied? When I talked to you this morning, you told me you hadn't been near Amy for a long time. But when I caught up with you in front of her apartment tonight, I realized you were the same one who was watching the night before last. How about that, York? You fellas don't leave me much. What do you mean? Sure, once in a while I go stand outside her apartment house, look up at the light on the window, maybe think a little about how things might have been. That's all. Uh, maybe you better come downtown with me, York. We'll check your story further. If you're clean, you got nothing to worry about. All right, Lieutenant. Sergeant, take Mr. York down to the car and wait for me there. Johnny, who else have you talked to? Oh, everybody close to her. But the one who interests me most is her agent, Mike Pomeroy. He can be a pretty rough customer when he wants to. And he thinks Amy's standing in the way of a career for an actress he's currently interested in. Let's talk about somebody else for a moment. Oh. You, Johnny. I think you're getting a little bit out of line. What do you mean? Down at police headquarters, we got a little black book. It tells us what to do and what not to do. It doesn't say anything about insurance investigators dragging possible suspects to their hotel room to question them. Listen, Al, when I'm assigned to a case, I usually try to break it any way I can. I know. It's just that I think you're taking this case pretty big. Meaning? Yesterday I told you that if I didn't know you better, I'd think you were falling for Amy a little yourself. Think it over, Johnny. We will continue with the Bradshaw matter in a moment. Friends, how'd you like to thrill your favorite youngster with some of the most exciting toys of the year? Picture the breathless excitement of any child surrounded by six gaily colored balloon-like giant animals up to three feet long, and all for the low, low price of just one dollar. Now, first you get Bounce-O the Clown with round pot belly and funny nose. Next comes Hoppy the Australian Kangaroo. Third, there's Roscoe the Roller Skating Bear. He's two feet tall and looks almost like real. Fourth, there's Whitey the Fat Indoor Snowman. And fifth, Mortimer the Giant Mouse, 18 inches long and sure to scare the whiskers off. 
off any cat. That's five different giant animals. But now, hold your breath for the most sensational toy of all, the star of the whole Christmas season, the jolly giant talking Santa Claus, guaranteed to make everybody's Christmas a merrier one. He's a big roly-poly happy Santa. He stands erect on two legs, is actually over three feet tall and 32 inches around. Best of all, he actually talks. Just pull the tape and he says, Merry Christmas for all to hear. He's the biggest, merriest talking as Santa ever. Sure to please your youngsters and spread good cheer. Yes, giant Santa proves there really is a Santa Claus. That's a total of six giant animals made of brightly colored, preformed, sturdy latex, which the kids can easily inflate. And the cost? Just one dollar, not for each. Just one dollar for all six of these lovable giants who'll turn your home into a circus parade. And here's a surprise. Mail your order today and you'll also receive absolutely free Peter the Rabbit, actually over two feet tall with big red ears almost nine inches long. But you must send now. Rush $1 plus 10 cents for packing and mailing for each set you want to Giant Animals, Box 1907, Grand Central Station, New York City. If not delighted with every one of your seven giant animals, return them to the Super Animals Company for a full refund, but keep the giant talking Santa as our gift. Order now. Supplies are limited. Rush $1.10 for packing and mailing for each set in cash, check, or money order to Giant Animals, Box 1907, Grand Central Station, New York City. That's $1 plus 10 cents with your name and address. Mail to Giant Animals, Box 1907. That's Box 1907, Grand Central Station, New York City. Giant Animals, Box 1907, Grand Central Station, New York City. <laughs> Expense account item 11, $4, drinks, for me. I thought about what Al Sintel had said. The possibility I was falling for Amy Bradshaw. Thought about it for two hours. Finally, I decided I had to find out if he was right. I went over to Amy's apartment. It was good of you to come over, Johnny. I just can't seem to sleep lately. Yeah. I noticed there's a policeman on duty down in the lobby. Lieutenant Centella arranged for that. It's funny. It should make me feel better, but it doesn't. It just keeps reminding me of it. A threat on my life. I'm glad you're here, Johnny. So am I. Awfully glad. Maybe I shouldn't say that, but... Do you hear any objections? Oh, well, who could... Excuse me. Yeah, sure. Hello? Yes? Oh, Porter. What? No, I'm sorry. I... No, really, Porter, it's out of the question. No, I... Good night, Porter. Kane, huh? Yes, I suppose he means well. But he can be rather annoying. Do you have a cigarette, Johnny? Here. Thanks. You seem rather quiet tonight. Oh, just thinking, I guess. It's funny. Mm. Our meeting like this. Yeah. Just a few days ago, I didn't know you at all. And now... And now what? I don't know, Johnny. I don't know. Amy. It was a mistake, Johnny. I'm sorry. Was it? Yes. Johnny, I'm afraid I've hurt a couple of people in the past. I don't want to hurt you. Don't worry. You won't. And that's the wonderful thing about being an actress. You play so many parts. The kiss. That was playing a part, huh? Even if it weren't, Johnny, it'd be no good. There'd always be something between us. It's right over there on the mantel. The clock? Yes. We can't turn it back. If I'd met you a long time ago before, Mike, or... But I didn't. No. So? Is the clock so bad, Amy? It is to an actress. Sometimes I pretend it isn't there. You ever do that, John? No, it doesn't do any good. But you can try. Can live a whole life trying. Isn't that really what we all do? I don't know. We go along playing our parts, doing what we have to do, pretending the clock isn't there. 
But all the while it is. And though we keep on fighting against it, we know we can't turn it back. We can't even stop it. One thing I'd accomplished, I guess. I'd decided I wouldn't be seeing Amy anymore after this case was wound up. Winding it up, though, was another question. And I was still as far from home as ever on it. But I couldn't seem to get Porter Kane and his quaint little hobby of collecting things out of my mind. Why, good evening, Mr. Dollar. Hello, Mr. Kane. Come in, come in. Thanks. I know it's late. I'm sorry. Not at all. As a matter of fact, I was hoping I'd see you again. I don't want to keep you. I see your hat and coat. No, I'm not going out. I've just come in. Oh. Uh, you said you were hoping you'd see me again? Yes, I enjoyed our other little chat very much. I, um... Suppose you came to talk some more about Amy Bradshaw. Matter of fact, Mr. Kane, I came to talk about you. Splendid. And about your hobby. Collecting. A fascinating hobby, Mr. Dollar. You take it pretty seriously, don't you? I've devoted most of my life to it. And I may say that I've succeeded rather brilliantly with it. Each item in my collection is incomparable, without equal. Yeah, one of a kind. And that, of course, is precisely why Amy is necessary to complete the collection. The crowning and final edition. Final? Yes, uh, for your information, Mr. Dollar, when I've acquired Amy, I intend to cease my hobby. Oh. She will complete my collection. Without her, though, it is still incomplete. Mind if I ask you a couple of questions, Mr. Kane? Not, not at all. You seem to have been pretty successful with your collection. Have you ever run up against an item you wanted but couldn't get? Of course not. <laughs> that just doesn't happen. Has it ever happened? Well, I can't remember that it ever... Yes... Yes, it did happen once. When? When I was nine years old. A playmate of mine had a lollipop that I admired greatly. He wouldn't give it to me, and he wouldn't sell it to me. What did you do? I, I did the only logical thing there was to do. I smashed the lollipop, Mr. Dollar. <laughs> Johnny Dollar will be back in a moment to tell you about tomorrow's episode. Friends, send for your set of some of the most exciting toys of the year. Six giant inflatable toys for only one dollar. Some up to three feet tall. You get Bounceo the Happy Clown, Hoppy the Australian Kangaroo, Roscoe the two feet long roller skating bear, Whitey the fat indoor snowman, Mortimer the giant mouse 18 inches long, and last but not least, the great giant talking Santa. A roly-poly giant over three feet tall and 32 inches around the belly that actually says Merry Christmas out loud when you pull the tape. That six sensational giant toys for only one dollar, made of sturdy, gaily colored latex that the kids can easily inflate. Send one dollar for each set to Giant Animals, Box 1907, Grand Central Station, New York City. And if you order right now, you get Peter the Rabbit over two feet tall, absolutely free. If not delighted with your giant animals, your money refunded immediately. Order today, you may never hear this offer again. Rush one dollar plus ten cents for packing and mailing in cash, check, or money order to Giant Animals, Box 1907, Grand Central Station, New York City. That's one dollar plus ten cents for each set, with your name and address, to Giant Animals, Box 1907, Grand Central Station, New York City. Now, here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's episode of the Amy Bradshaw Matter. Tomorrow, well, it's the wind-up, and a pretty rough one. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood, written by Robert Reif. It is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking.